Chapter 17 The sixth star fell at Wimbledon. My brother, keeping watch beside the women in a meadow, saw the green flash of it far beyond the hills. On Tuesday, they made their way towards Colchester. They were still set upon getting across the sea. After passing the night in a field of wheat, the three fugitives reached Chelmsford. At midday, they passed through Tillingham and suddenly came in sight of the sea. It was crowded with every type of shipping it is possible to imagine. About a couple of miles out was a single naval warship, the Thunderchild. Soon my brother managed to attract the attention of some men on a paddle steamer from the Thames. These men sent a boat and agreed to take the three of them for £36. The steamer was going, these men said, to Ostend. It was about two o'clock when my brother's party were safely aboard the steamboat. But the captain waited until five in the afternoon, picking up passengers until the seated decks were dangerously crowded. The captain finally sailed when the sound of guns began in the south. As if in answer, the thundercloud fired a small gun and hoisted a string of flags. A jet of smoke sprang out of her funnels. Our little steamer sailed eastward of the big crescent of shipping. The low Essex coast was growing hazy when a Martian appeared, small and faint in the remote distance. He was advancing along the muddy coast from the direction of Falness. Every soul aboard stood and stared at that distant shape, higher than the trees or church towers. This was the first Martian my brother had seen. He stood more amazed than terrified, watching this titan advancing deliberately towards the shipping. The little paddle boat retreated with terrifying slowness from this ominous advance. Suddenly, my brother was flung headlong from the seat upon which he was standing. There was shouting all about him, a trampling of feet and a cheer that seemed to be answered faintly. The steamboat lurched and rolled him over upon his hands. When he got back to his feet, my brother saw the thunder child steaming headlong towards the Martian. It was coming to the rescue of the threatened shipping. Spray blinded my brother for a moment. When his eyes were clear again, he saw that the thunder child had destroyed one of the Martian tripods. The whole steamer, from end to end, rang with frantic cheering. That cheering was echoed on all the ships around us. The steam hung upon the water for many minutes, hiding the third Martian and the coast altogether. And all this time our boat was paddling steadily out to sea and away from the fight. When at last the confusion cleared, the drifting bank of black vapour appeared. Nothing of the thunder child could be made out.